Right, Andy, here we have a quite interesting Bora. So please tell us about first the anecdote that you <laughs> have. We used to look after this car um, probably 20 years ago and it belonged to an enthusiast in the UK. Uh, and it was, it was yellow then, which had been its original colour. And we took it to have some work done on the air conditioning system. Right. And when the air conditioning specialist opened the back, uh, the clamshell at the back, the rear windscreen fell out onto the road. Ouch. Um, it hadn't been uh, bonded in at all. It was just sitting in there. Uh, it didn't break. It didn't break. Um, which shows how good the quality of the glass was originally. Yes. So. Anyway, he sold it. And uh, the, 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 the guy he sold it to decided he wanted to go racing with it in uh, the HSCC, the Historic Sports Car Club in the UK. Yeah. So it's a series where you can't, you don't, you're not allowed to modify the car too much. It has to still basically have its road trim. Um, but there are certain things you can do. Um, so he, it had a cage in it, of course. Uh, and it had a racing seat with all the different mountings. So he ripped out all of the LHM system and the pedals and everything. Uh, they did some uh, crazy modifications to the cooling system. Yeah. Uh, and to try and get more airflow, they actually arched the back of the bonnet yeah. so that it would air would exit through the boot. So they used the whole of the the boot yes. uh, panel uh, area as yeah. um, as sort of like a ram effect air through yes. through the radiator. So all of that um, was a bit of a mess. Yes. Uh, the car had obviously had some damage, uh, and the roof was actually bent after the racing. But I don't know how that happened as such, but... Um, because you don't think it went on actually on its roof? I don't think the car went on its roof, but obviously something had happened to it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, when the race... It wasn't a very successful racing car, um, because Boris are a bit heavy for that, really, in this production it's more, It would be more successful than a very fast course. Yes. Uh, the Mall Spa, Stone Rock yes. circuit, but not on the club circuits. Not on club circuits, no. So, uh, anyway, the, the, uh, the owner who'd raced the car decided to sell it, and it's now with a, a new owner, an enthusiast, who wants us to restore it to its original. Yes. Um, so, the body, as you can see, has now been done. Uh, we spent a lot of time straightening out the roof. Yes. Um, and it's had various parts of the sort of rails of the clamshell, uh, because, because the car was slightly sort of um, out of true, somebody had cut the clamshell to Could match. You. So it's been re-jigged, so everything's now square. Um, and we got rid of all of the modifications under the bonnet uh, and all of that radiator. Um, and so now it's had new sills, new door skins, uh, and various other body repairs. And now we have the part of the roof that you removed, yeah. which obviously means it really has to fit right. Well quite lucky in that sense in that I actually had a stainless steel, a new roof for a Bora, oh. factory part. Yeah. Um, so we were able to use that as yeah. really as the, as the way of sort of making sure everything was square. So on, on Boras, of course, this is one of the most distinctive features, this clamshell. Yeah. Um, and as I say, it was, it was, uh, it was all out of true and then had been sort of modified to fit the car when the car wasn't square. Yes. Um, but they have a certain problems with these where the, the clamshell opens up over the years and so the catches don't actually line up anymore when you try and close it. No. And more than one of these has actually been damaged by people not being able to close it properly but thinking they've closed it. And they drive off. They drive off and it acts like an air brake. Like with mirrors. So, like with mirrors, yeah. So, um, so we've fixed quite a few of them over the years. Um, this one also had the typical borer problem, which is rust in this section here, yes. because this is uh, effectively a uh, double skin section, yes. um, and it has that rubber trim in the back of it that holds water. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's had a lot of that replaced. The basic chassis uh, is still very sound uh, on this car, and the subframe, which is obviously the removable subframe where the engine and gearbox is. And what are peculiarities of restoring Boras? Because it's quite a complex car. Well, the interesting thing is that actually getting the engine and gearbox out of the Bora looks like a really daunting task, but it's not because everything rolls out on the subframe. You, yes. you more or less 
disconnect everything and then lift the car off and roll the subframe out with the engine and gearbox yes. all still intact on the subframe. Um, but some of the problems that you do have with these tend to sort of um, be to do with things like the fuel tank because mm -hmm. the fuel tank is, is, is on this side um, and it has uh, a layer of uh, asbestos covering yes. uh, from you which of course retains water so you get uh, problems with the fuel tank um, going rusty. Um, borers, the water pump was always a problem with borers uh, because it's stuck right at the front of the engine so if you have to replace the water pump you can't actually take the pump off in one piece you have to dismantle the pump while it's still at the from front underneath. of the engine half sometimes from underneath sometimes by lying on top of the air, yeah. air box I remember I have actually done it myself um, what, but, okay. what about the uh, bushings between the subframe and the chassis the bushes are easy enough to replace they they have a Boras and Kamsins and Marax all have this similar style of yes. a bush on the outer uh, between the wishbones and the suspension uprights. Yes. Uh, and the bushes, there's no way of lubricating those bushes. Um, and eventually they seize up. And, and if they've been allowed to seize up, you can get this peculiar uh, creaking noise when you're driving the car, which is basically the dry joints of the bushes. And sometimes if you test for that, you push down on the back, and if it doesn't come back up, then uh, the bushes are, are seized. Right. Uh, this actually, th it happened on this particular car, is that in extreme cases, it can break the, w the bottom wishbone. The first time we ever saw this car, the bottom wishbone was actually cracked all the way through because the bushes were seized up. Moving on to the center portion of the car. Yeah. Uh, what are the greatest uh, difficulties here? Um, the LHM system is quite sort of complicated because you have a ram which you can see down here which is for the seat movement yes. and then you have the pedal box which also obviously goes up uh, fore and aft on a ram, moves something through something like 15 centimetres. Um, it's just about the most sophisticated seat adjustment yeah. ever. Yes. Yeah. Um, and at the same time you've then got the two uh, like rockers, the one that, that move those, and it's all hydraulics, all connected by those little microfiber pipes, um, and all got connections with a clip. So there's possibilities of leakage with their uh, all sorts of places, really, with those. Um, but it has to be done by the right people, like you know, these systems. It's not to be given to an amateur. No. Um, what uh, for the hoses now, all the uh, LHM supplies, yeah. there's all the right pipes, everything is available, right? Everything is available. Some of the Citroen, the, there are some parts that are girling type yes. fittings and some parts that are Citroen type fittings. Yes. So you have to be really careful that you don't mix them up. Right. Um, different pipe sizes, different threads. Um, and also the very peculiar Citroen fitting, which has like a rubber seal on the end of it, yes. which is, I think, unique to Citroen. Um, so, what borers, Kamsins, and Marax all use combinations of those. Um, the borer, in a way, uses less of it. Um, but the uh, the the, um, the other crazy thing hydraulically, which of course, because the borer has a standard hydraulic clutch using normal brake and clutch fluid, yes. um, and it's mounted in a little box in the front here. Here is the clutch. You can just see the clutch reservoir for filling the clutch. Right. You can't get on top of it, so you have to fill it blind. Um, but right next to it is the washer bottle for the windscreen washers. Uh, and I had a panic call from a borer owner once who put brake fluid in the windscreen washers and then squirted. And ruined his paint. And because of the stainless steel roof and the glass, He'd actually missed all the paint, but he had specks of brake fluid all the oh. way down the roof and the, and the glass. Oof. But he'd never actually uh, managed to damage his paint. But that's like people who put brake fluid in their LHM system. Yes. Thinking it's green, it'll work. Exactly, exactly. 